all right everybody welcome back and in this video we'll be learning about tcp udp and the icmp protocols right most of the internet consists of tcp and udp protocols what is a protocol well this is not a networking class but i'll just keep it brief so i won't give it, get into details of how protocols work and all that but protocols is just a way two computers agree to communicate right so we 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 two people that is me and you are agreeing to communicate using the language english so i say some word right then i pause then i write a full stop and you understand that the sentence has been you know terminated or maybe i should give a pause in my thought here you know you construct that in your brain similarly how computers communicate is using protocols so if you use a tcp protocol and the other party is also using a tcp protocol you both have certain expectations in terms of how the communication should be started how the communication should be carried on and how the communication should end right so there's a certain certain things which both party already know like you and i both know english similarly every every computer which is connected on internet um should know tcp and udp by default so tcp protocol is used for a lot of other protocols as a base protocol so you're going to see ssh is built on top of tcp http is tcp https is tcp mysql is tcp dns tcp dns udp well they have the protocols in name and icmp as well so that's about tcp what is udp udp is basically another another protocol just like tcp but it is much relaxed so tcp um kind of uh takes a job that it should deliver what has been sent so it it is kind of responsible protocol udp on the other hand is that guy from the ages of 16 or 17 who's irresponsible and does not really care about the world a lot and would kind of attempt to do the work but if it fails he'll not look over twice but tcp is that responsible citizen age 35 or 40 who is determined to complete the task given to him so yeah you can think about that but anyway the idea is that uh, your websites work on tcp and udp uh just that's the tcp protocol not the udp sorry so the idea is that you only want to allow tcp traffic on your websites and by default what you want is you only want the http protocol the http traffic to be allowed or maybe you want https as well right so once you have these two rules in place every other thing every other traffic would be dropped what is the difference between http and choosing um you know custom and tcp here well the difference is you can specify the port here as 80 and this is actually equivalent to just writing http here right so you can see that it's one and the same thing and for https as well it's one and the same thing so once you have that in place every other traffic is going to be dropped right and this is inbound rules so that means that i as an end user when i try to request this instance my instance i am a user and the request is an inbound request to this particular computer which is running on this ip address so that is the rule for inbound request now your own server can make requests to internet as well right that's fair enough you know you can go to your server right here and you can go ahead and say something like call google.com right so right here you just made a external request to google so you can go ahead and even customize that so if you want your instance to never communicate with the outside world well that's one way to drop all the traffic but in almost every case you do not want that because you know in that case you'll also lose the ability to actually have a website online right because you won't be able to update packages you won't be able to reply to people who are using your website using a custom port and you won't be able to even um you know just install new packages stuff like that so for the outbound rules you probably in a lot of cases just want to leave it like this for the tcp part um you want the ssh to be all ipv for all ipv6 
you can do that or maybe you can just go ahead and add just your own URL so for example if you're running 1.1.1.1 for example just an example now only the person with the IP address of 1.1.1.1 would be able to SSH into your instance nobody else right so for example if we go ahead and apply this to digital ocean tutorial and if I create this firewall what you're gonna see now is that if I go back and if I exit because um, yeah I think the connection is already dead so if I go ahead and try to SSH now what we're gonna see as in fact let's just make it a little bit verbose but you're gonna see that we are stuck now on connecting because the traffic for the SSH is actually dropped by DigitalOcean before it can reach our server we can never get a response from our own server that means we are just stuck at the connecting phase so let's just go ahead and make this all IPv4 and all IPv6 and save it and you're gonna see now we would be able to connect just fine because the firewall has been updated so there's that again you can play around with this by going here editing rule uh, removing these um, and saving now what you should be able to see is that if you refresh now you cannot visit the nginx page you see that the cursor keeps loading it's waiting for the server to respond but it never would and it'll just time out so there's that now once you go ahead and edit the rule and add all ipv4 and all ipv6 you're gonna see that it's going to work again just fine right so there's that so that's how firewall inbound and outbound rule works in DigitalOcean, and it's pretty handy to keep at least these three ports open to everyone i would say for ssh you can whitelist your only ip do not blacklist everything um but yeah that's more or less for the all the other ports the traffic would automatically be blocked the traffic would be blacklisted so you do not have to worry about anything except you right here so that's all for this video i'm going to see you really soon in the next one